Hey everybody, so today we are going to be talking about a little thing called consent. Not a little thing, consent is actually a really big thing when it comes to sex. So today we're going to be talking about it. Um, and when I talk about consent, I like to start by watching this video um, that kind of compares tea and sex and talks about consent in that way. So we're going to watch this video um, and then discuss it. If you're still struggling with consent, just imagine instead of initiating sex, you're making them a cup of tea. You say, hey, would you like a cup of tea? And they go, oh my god, I would love a cup of tea, thank you. Then you know they want a cup of tea. If you say, hey, would you like a cup of tea? And they're like, uh, you know, I'm not really sure. Then you can make them a cup of tea, or not, but be aware that they might not drink it. And if they don't drink it, then, and this is the important bit, don't make them drink it. Just because you made it doesn't mean you're entitled to watch them drink it. And if they say, no thank you, then don't make them tea. At all. Just don't make them tea. Don't make them drink tea. Don't get annoyed at them for not wanting tea. They just don't want tea, okay? They might say, yes please, that's kind of you. And then when the tea arrives, they actually don't want the tea at all. Sure, that's kind of annoying as you've gone to all the effort of making the tea, but they remain under no obligation to drink the tea. They did want tea. Now they don't. Some people change their mind in the time it takes to boil the kettle, brew the tea and add the milk. And it's okay for people to change their mind. And you are still not entitled to watch them drink it. And if they are unconscious, don't make them tea. Unconscious people don't want tea and they can't answer the question, do you want tea? Because they're unconscious. Okay, maybe they were conscious when you asked them if they wanted tea and they said yes, but in the time it took you to boil the kettle or brew the tea and add the milk, they are now unconscious. You should just put the tea down, make sure the unconscious person is safe, and this is the important part again, don't make them drink the tea. They said yes then, sure, but unconscious people don't want tea. If someone said yes to tea, started drinking it, and then passed out before they'd finished it, don't keep on pouring it down their throat. Take the tea away, make sure they are safe, because unconscious people don't want tea. Trust me on this. If someone said yes to tea around your house last Saturday, that doesn't mean they want you to make them tea all the time. They don't want you to come around to their place unexpectedly and make them tea and force them to drink it, going, but you wanted tea last week, or to wake up to find you pouring tea down their throat, going, but you wanted tea last night. If you can understand how completely ludicrous it is to force people to have tea when they don't want tea, and you are able to understand when people don't want tea, then how hard is it to understand when it comes to sex? Whether it's tea or sex, consent is everything. And on that note, I'm going to make myself a cup of tea. Alright, so, um, this video, obviously, uh, I think it's really good, but it definitely has some faults um, that we can talk about, and it doesn't quite go into enough detail about consent. So let's start with some more details. What is consent? To me, consent is, you know, getting permission to do something. We have to get consent for all sorts of things every single day. We have to get consent um, if we're in school. We have to get consent to go to the bathroom, right? Um, if we want to stay out past curfew, we got to get consent from our parents to stay out past curfew. If we want to call in sick to our job, we have to call our boss and say, hey, I'm sick. Can I take today off? Um, and our boss has to say yes or no. However, when it comes to sex, consent, for some reason, people find it much more difficult to do. Um, and so why is that? One of the major reasons is because of all the emotions that go along with having sex, or that can go along with having sex. So if I invite you to my house, and I'm like, hey, you want some tea? And you say no, I don't really care, right? Like, drink the tea, don't drink the tea, you do you. But if I invite you over to my house because I want to have sex with you, and I ask, hey, can we have sex, and you say no, that's going to hurt my feelings. Um, and it's important that we understand that. Because those kind of like feelings that go along with sex and with consent often are what affects us from getting good, healthy sexual consent. And so I'm not saying that you should say yes to someone because you're worried about hurting their feelings. What I'm saying is, if you're going to have sex with someone, you have to be prepared for the feelings that go along with both having sex with them, 
but also the feelings that might come up if they say no to having sex with you. And also, as the person saying no, be prepared to deal with the feelings you are going to have from saying no to having sex with this person. I never ever want someone to say yes, I want to have sex with you because I'm worried about hurting your feelings if I say no. But this does happen. And so be prepared. How can I deal with the feelings that I have um, so that I can say no? How can I make sure I'm saying no if I don't want to have sex and also dealing with these feelings that are going to come up from that? Um, and if someone says no to me, how am I going to deal with that, uh, those feelings of someone saying no to me without trying to coerce them into having sex or without trying to you know, sexually assault them or something like that? How do we deal with these kind of emotions that go along with it? So when I learned about sex, I learned uh, you know, the no means no method of getting consent. And so if someone says no, then don't have sex with them, which definitely, if someone says, no, I don't want to have sex with you, don't have sex with them. Uh, but there is a lot of middle ground or a lot of gray area between no, I don't want to have sex with you and yes, I want to have sex with you. Um, and so one of those things that we want when we're talking about consent is we want an enthusiastic yes. We want enthusiastic consent. Um, so when you're thinking, do I want to have sex with this person? You should think, am I this dude's level of excitement about having sex with this person? And if you're not this dude's level of excitement, just say no and wait until you are. You don't want to have sex when, with someone or when you are feeling like, I guess I'll have sex or uh, maybe or I don't want to hurt his feelings. So I'm going to say yes. Um, you want to be excited. You want to have enthusiastic sex. So you want to be enthusiastic about it. So if you're not enthusiastic, don't have sex. Um, just say no. If you are like, I don't know, maybe say no. If you're like, uh, say no. Wait until you are super, super excited to be having sex. Because the best sex you're going to have is the sex you have when you're super excited to be having sex. And so one of the really important things is that both partners are super, super excited, super enthusiastic about having sex with each other. Another important thing to remember is that silence does not equal consent. If they're not saying no, they aren't saying yes. Um, when we were talking just a couple seconds ago about the emotions that come up when we're trying to get consent, people might be afraid to say no um, because they're worried, again, about hurting someone's feelings. So instead of saying no, they might change the topic, um, not say anything at all, uh, even just go along with it, but not in an enthusiastic way. And I don't want this to happen. Again, I want you to only be having sex if you're super enthusiastic about it. So if you're trying to have sex with someone and they are not enthusiastic, they're not saying like, yes, I want to do this. This sounds awesome. Just wait. Check in with them. Hey, how's it going? Is everything okay? You don't seem like you're really enthusiastic about this. Do you really want to be doing this? And then give them the opportunity to tell you how they really feel without any sort of pressure. A couple other really important things to remember about consent is that both parties have to be truly into what's going on. Um, no one should be pressuring each other into having sex. We're going to talk about this when we talk about something called coercion. Um, but we shouldn't be pressuring each other into having sex, either through words um, or physical action. And both parties feel safe to say no at any time. Just because I said sex, yes to sex, like, you know, doesn't mean I have to continue saying yes. I can say no and you have to stop at any time. Or if someone says no to me, I have to stop no matter what we're doing. If someone says no, stop. Um, but even if someone doesn't say no, if their body language just changes, check in with them. Um, if they go from being enthusiastic to being not enthusiastic, check in with them. Hey, what's going on? Is everything okay? And so body language. I just mentioned body language. What is body language, Liam? Body language is just the way, com we, the way we communicate uh, when we're not talking. Uh, everything we do with our bodies to communicate. And so, waving, right? I, hey, that's body language. I'm waving to you. Most people know if you're waving, you're saying hi, right? Um, smiling, right? Smiling is uh, body language. However, body language isn't like the end-all be-all for consent. If you're like, hey, you want to have sex, and someone smiles but doesn't say anything, that is not a yes. Um, because smiling doesn't always mean you're excited. I don't know about any of y'all, but when I am uncomfortable, I smile sometimes. 
So if I'm like in an awkward conversation with someone I don't really want to talk to, um, I might be like, <laughs> yeah, this is a great conversation. Looking around for someone else to like get me out of here. So a smile doesn't always mean I'm excited. Um, and I know a lot of other people that also smile when they're nervous. So just because I'm smiling does not mean I'm excited or happy or enthusiastic. It might mean I'm nervous. Um, so we gotta look for other things than just body language or just certain body language. We have to look for body language all overall. Um, are they leaning in or are they pulling away? Not just like when you're physically touching each other. Like if you go to touch someone and they like pull back, definitely a no. Um, but just in general, if someone's really into you um, or if you're really into someone, when they're talking, you're going to be listening, right? You're going to be leaning into that conversation. You're going to be trying to like connect with them in that conversation. Um, and if you're not into them, you're going to be pulling away. You're going to be looking around, trying to find an out. Uh, and so check, like, is this person leaning in? Is this person listening to me? Is this person like acting like they actually want to be here? Or are they looking like they're trying to bounce out? Do they look happy or do they look uncomfortable? Again, we all kind of know, I think, what people look like when they're happy or when they're uncomfortable. Um, happy people, you know, arms usually open. Uh, maybe they're touching you. Maybe they're touching like their hair. Um, they're smiling. Maybe they're giggling. Um, you know, they just look happy. Uncomfortable people, maybe their arms are crossed. They're looking around, trying to find a way out of here. Um, yeah, there's like if you go to touch them, maybe like they kind of like flinch a little bit. Those kind of all are, those are all signs of, that someone's like not really comfortable with this situation. Um, and are they kissing you back or are they staying still? If you're kissing someone and they're not kissing you back, stop kissing them. It's never going to get less awkward. No one's ever been like kissed for like five minutes without kissing you back and then been like, oh yeah, now I want to kiss you. No, the longer it happens, the more weird, uncomfortable and awkward it's going to become um, and the worse it's going to become. So please, if it sounds really obvious, but a lot of people don't realize it. They think, oh, if I keep kissing them, it's going to turn them on. It's going to arouse them, and then they're going to want to start having sex with me. That's not how it works. If you're kissing someone, and they're not kissing you back, just stop kissing them. So, again, another really important thing about consent is that everyone is clear on what's about to go down. Everyone you know, knows what they're consenting to, uh, is excited about their, what they're consenting to. And so, this often is really hard, because we don't talk about sex in a upfront way a lot of times. Um, and when I talk to students, you know, I tell them like, ask them if you can take their shirt off. And they're like, that's weird. But it shouldn't be weird. You should be able to ask these really straightforward questions when you're trying to get consent from someone. Instead, we say things like, actually, I don't really know if people say this anymore or if people ever said this or if it was just like a media thing, but like, you know, that Netflix and chill idea. Netflix and chill means something to someone and it might mean something completely different to someone else. Uh, one person's Netflix and chill might be like cuddling on the couch and spooning, maybe making out a little bit, maybe like some top stuff or things like that. Someone else's um, Netflix and chill could be like, you know, uh, other forms of sex, like oral sex or vaginal sex or anal sex. Um, and so we got to be much more specific than just Netflix and chill. Uh, we got to ask like really straightforward questions. Can I take your shirt off? Uh, can I kiss you? Like just simple things. Can we have sex? Can we go to your bedroom? Things like that are really, really important questions to ask. Um, and for some reason, we have such a hard time asking these questions. Uh, but if you can't ask these questions, if you're not like mature enough to ask someone, hey, can I take your shirt off? Uh, then should you be having sex yet? Or maybe you should wait until you are comfortable asking those kind of things. Because we want to make sure we're getting really, really good consensual sexual intercourse from each other. Um, so again, can I take your shirt off? Want to try something new? Do you like when I do this? Do you like when I do that? Um, do you want me to blank? Can I blank? What do you want me to do? Um, asking your partner what they want from you, A, makes it for a much better consent because they're telling you, I want you to do this. And B, it makes for much better sex because they're telling you what feels good to them. Um, consensual sex and having this consensual conversation, not only does it produce safe, consensual sex, but it also produces pleasurable sex because you're telling each other what you want from each other. Um, so be upfront, tell each other, I love it when you do this, I love it when you do that, touch me here, touch me there. Be communicating during sex. Don't be silent, don't be you know, quiet. 
tell each other what you want so you can get the most out of your sexual relationships um, as you can, right? Another really important thing about consent is that everyone can say no at any time. Again, I mentioned this just a couple seconds ago, um, but it's really, really important to remember this. Just because I consented to something doesn't mean I consented to everything. Uh, and sometimes people don't realize this. Sometimes people think, like, if I consent to making out, I have to have sex with them. And it's not true. You can just consent to making out. Um, you can just consent to, you know, touch and top stuff. Uh, you can just content, consent to touching stuff through pants um, or just hand stuff like mutual masturbation or self-stimulation. You can consent to just oral sex um, or whatever. You can consent to whatever you want um, and that your partner has to listen. Also, if you're even if you consent to like, you know, penis and vagina sex per, per se or penis and anus sex or penis and mouth sex, whatever it is. If at any time you feel uncomfortable or you don't want it to happen anymore, you can say no and they have to stop. Uh, and if someone says no to you, stop. But even if someone doesn't say no, if you are, you know, you're making out with someone and you go to take their shirt off and they kind of like tense up or freeze, stop. They don't want that. So check in with them. Hey, what's going on? Are we moving too fast? Do you want me to do something else? Um, and then give them the opportunity to tell you what they want. Uh, what's going to make them feel best uh, and then accept it and kind of like you know go with whatever they want to do so that you know that a they're consenting and b they're feeling the best they're going to feel so i talked about coercion to a second ago and i told you guys we're going to talk about it more and coercion happens a lot during sex um and it's kind of made to seem okay uh, by a lot of movies and tv shows and i know when i was a kid um I never thought that like saying, but I love you was a bad thing, but it is. Um, and so if someone says no to having sex, you don't want to try to coerce them. And coercion, coercion means like manipulate them. You don't want to like try to convince them to do something they don't want to do. And so if I'm like, hey, you want to have sex? And they say no. And then I say, but I love you. That but I love you is coercion because you're no longer saying have sex with me because you want to. You're saying have sex with me because I love you. And because I love you, you owe me sex. Or if you loved me as much as I loved you, you'd have sex with me to prove it. And you don't have to prove your love to someone through sex. Um, you can have sex with someone you're not in love with. It happens. People have sex with people they're not in love with. Common occurrence. Uh, you can also be super, super, super in love with someone and just not ready to have sex yet. And that is okay. It is your choice. Maybe you want to wait um, a few, you know, a few weeks, go on a few more dates. Maybe you want to wait a few months. Maybe you want to wait till you're a certain age or till you reach some sort of milestone in your life, like graduating from high school or college or getting a job. Um, whatever the reason is, it's fine. You should never feel like you have to have sex with someone just to prove that you love them. And people shouldn't make you feel that way either. Another really common one is like, come on, I'm horny. Um, this is like begging for sex, right? And nobody should beg for sex. If you're begging for sex, it's lame. Don't do it. Uh, if you won't, I'll find someone else who will. That's a threat, right? Like, that's not even, like, begging or, like, come on, I love you. That's a threat. I will leave you. Um, and I think it's obvious that we shouldn't threaten people into having sex with us. But again, this happens um, quite often. And a lot of people think it's girls coercing, or guys coercing girls, but girls can coerce guys too by saying things like, oh, what, is he gay or something? I mean, I've heard girls say this. Uh, oh, he doesn't want to have sex with me because he's gay. And not, maybe you are gay. If you're gay, gay it up. Live your gay life. You do you. No one should shame you for that. But also, maybe you're not gay. Not every dude wants to have sex with every person they see 24-7. No matter what it tries to make you feel like when you're on TV or things like that, not every single guy, Not if you're a straight guy, not every single straight guy wants to have sex with every single girl he sees all the time. Not every single gay guy wants to have sex with every single dude he sees all the time. Guys have much more complex sexual emotions than just, I want to have sex. Uh, and we, should, we shouldn't be shamed into, you know, expressing these different kinds of sexual emotions we have um, because we're worried that someone's going to call us gay or someone's going to shame us for having these kinds of emotions. Maybe I'm not ready to have sex yet. That's fine. Maybe I just want to finish my video game. That's also fine. I get to decide my body, my choice. Um, and we shouldn't try to coerce each other 
um, by using this kind of coercive language. Another thing that happens, this one specifically happens a lot of times between guys and girls, um, but it can happen in any type of relationship. But it's this accidental physical coercion that guys might not even notice they're doing, and so we have to be really cognizant of it. We have to really pay attention to our body language uh, when we're trying to have sex with someone. So not only is body language great for finding out if someone wants to have sex, body language can also affect what, what someone's saying. So I'll give you an example. Say uh, me and this girl are in a room together, uh, or me and this person in general. Me and this person are in a room together, and you know I want to have sex. They say no, and they go to leave, and I shut the door. Now, I might be thinking, you know, I'm just shutting the door because I want to keep you here so we can talk a little bit. Uh, I'm not thinking anything bad about it. I'm not thinking it seems threatening. But to that person you just locked in your room, it might seem way more threatening than what you think it looks like. And so you got to be really aware about that. Because we might have heard of this thing called fight or flight, which is when you're scared, you're either going to fight someone or you're going to run away. However, if you can't fight the person because they're bigger than you um, and you're worried about like you know being injured or hurt or murdered, um, and you can't run away because they locked the door on you and you're stuck in their room, the next thing that people do is something called freeze. And they just kind of go along with whatever the person is saying because they're scared of what's going to happen next. And so if you're physically intimidating someone, even if you don't realize you're doing it, they might say yes to having sex with you, even though they don't want to. Um, and so again, you, we gotta, gotta, gotta make sure we're not doing this. If someone says no, and they go to leave, let them leave. If you wanna like, you know, go outside and talk to them, fine. But really like, just let them go. Let them figure out what they need to figure out um, and then come back and talk to you. And again, there's no, there's nothing bad with saying no to having sex. There's nothing bad to saying yes to having sex. Uh, it's your choice what you want to do. Uh, and nobody should, you know, coerce you physically or verbally or mentally or whatever into having sex with you. Plus, being pushy makes for terrible sex. Again, the best sex you're going to have is sex when you guys are both super excited, super enthusiastic, um, and communicating with each other about what pleasures you and what you want. Also, we got to be honest, um, not just for, co uh, you know, consent and things like that, but just for our sexual relationships in general, we got to be really honest with each other. Um, ask questions. Have you been tested? And be honest about if you've been tested. If you've never been tested, tell them. Um, if you have been tested, but it's been a while, tell them. Um, if you got tested positive for an STI, you know, if it's a curable one and you don't have it anymore, your choice if you want to disclose that much of your past. Um, but if you don't have a curable STI, you know, HIV or herpes or something, be honest and be upfront about that. It can be really difficult um, to, you know, tell someone maybe you have herpes or something, but it's really important you do because that affects their ability to consent. Are you on birth control? If you're having heterosexual sex uh, where a pregnancy can occur, penis and vagina, you got to be honest about birth control. Um, not just are you on birth control, but are you good at taking it? Uh, if you are on the pill... Excuse me, if you're on the pill and you forget to take it like every other day, you gotta be honest with your sexual partner about that. Because they might be thinking, oh, they're on the pill, they're taking it every day, I'm not risking very much. But if you're missing it all, like every other day, that's decreasing its effectiveness. And so you're putting your partner at, you know, a much different place than they think they are. And that affects their ability to consent. Do you have any other partners? Again, another one that can be really hard to be honest about. Uh, if you wanna have sex with someone, but you also want to have sex with other people, that's your choice. But you have to be honest with those sexual partners so they know um, that you're having sex with other people. Because again, if you say, oh, it's only me and you, but it's not, they're consenting to something that they aren't realizing they're consenting to. And that affects their ability to consent. If I say, yes, I want to have sex with you because I think it's just me and you, that's what I'm saying yes to. Um, and if you're lying to me, then again, it kind of goes back to coercion. You're coercing me into sex um, and that's not okay. And so make sure you are honest. It can be hard, but you gotta be, you know, I really like you. I really enjoy having sex with you, but I also want to have sex with other people. And if you guys can come to like, you know, a mutual understanding about that, that's fine. Like live your polyamorous life. You do you. Uh, but make sure you got, you come to that common conclusion without any sort of coercion. Consent once does not equal consent forever. 
the video talked about this, right? Like, just because I said have it to, yes to having sex with you on Saturday doesn't mean you get to come over to my house whenever you want and have sex with me. Uh, I get to decide and you get to decide when we have sex together. I mean, it's we, not either one of us. Uh, you know, that's fine. Maybe we had sex once and it wasn't very good and I don't want to have sex again with you. That's fine. Uh, maybe we had sex and I just didn't really enjoy it and I don't want to have sex with anybody. Again, that's fine. Um, just because you've had sex once doesn't mean you need to continue having sex forever. You can, you know, decide, oh, you know what? I had it. I did it. It wasn't like, oh, I expected it. So I'm going to wait a little while until I'm more enthusiastic about it, more excited about it. So how do we know someone definitely wants to have sex with us? What are we looking for? We're looking for that excited body language, right? Uh, they're smiling, they're giggling, you're looking for that enthusiastic, yes, I want to do this. Um, when you're like, hey, can I take your shirt off? They're like, yes, take my shirt off. When you're like, hey, can I touch you? They're like, yes, touch me here. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. Um, they're communicating with you, right? Uh, there's, yeah, that's a definite yes, right? So what is an unsure though, right? Uh, like maybe you go to take their shirt off and they kind of flinch, or you go to like kiss them and they pull away, or you ask them like, hey, can I take your shirt off? And they're like, mm, I don't know. If they say, I don't know, that's a no. I'm sorry, it might hurt your feelings, but again, you gotta be ready for those hurt feelings uh, if you're trying to have sex with someone. And if they say, you know, I don't know, just stop. Be like, hey, it's all right. We don't have to do it until you're ready to do it. Totally fine. And then what do we do when someone says no? That's right, we don't coerce them. We don't try to convince them to have sex. We don't beg them to have sex. Uh, any of that stuff. We're just like, all right, that's fine. Let's go do something else instead. A really important thing is like, if someone says no um, to having sex, you probably don't want to like stay, like let's say you're in a bedroom, right? And like you're making out on the bed uh, and you're like, hey, I want to have sex. And they're like, nah, I don't really want to. It's not always the best idea to stay in that situation um, because it can, you know, it's not, you're not going to not want to have sex if you're like continue laying in bed together. Um, and so maybe go do something else to kind of like get you out of that kind of vibe and that mood. Um, another thing about uh, when someone says no is that you can talk about why you don't want to have sex without it being coercive. Like if your partner's like, hey, I don't want to have sex, you can ask them like, okay, well, why not? You gotta try to make sure like you're not sounding coercive or you're not trying to convince them to have sex with you. Um, but just like, you can be like, hey, why not? And listen to their response and be understanding of that response. Uh, but if you wanna have sex right now and your partner you know, doesn't wanna have sex for a few years, um, maybe it's not the type of relationship you should be in. Because relationships are about like, you know, commonality, things like that. And if you're, you want to have sex right now and your partner's just not ready and isn't going to be ready for a while, um, you guys aren't really in the same space. And it's going to cause a lot of friction, a lot of tension, because you're going to want to continue to have sex and they're, going to, they're not going to want to have sex, right? And so that's going to lead to arguments, it could lead to toxicity, unhealthy relationship habits. Um, so have that conversation. Hey, I really like you, um, but, and not like in a threatening way, not like I'm going to leave you if you don't have sex. But in a, you know, we're just not in the same place right now, and so maybe this relationship isn't the type of relationship we should be having. So some other instances when someone can't consent, age, um, you know, statutory rape laws. If someone's under the age of 17, they cannot consent to sexual intercourse um, with anybody, actually. Uh, usually two, you know, 15 or 16 year olds who are consenting to each other don't get into trouble, but legally they aren't allowed to be having sex with each other. I know it's a weird law that we don't actually talk too much about, but it's true. Uh, people under the age of 17 do not have, um, like the ability to consent to sex in New York state. And so age in general, uh, but definitely large age differences. If you're like under the age of 17 and your partner's 21 or 22 or anything like that, um, that's definitely statutory rape. Um, it can lead to some. Uh, it can lead to your partner who's over the age of eighteen to get into trouble. Um, and also, age can like affect your ability to consent. People who are older, you know, they probably have better jobs. Um, they probably they maybe have their own place or their own vehicle or things like that, and they can use those kind of things to manipulate you. Um, and so, definitely, I really recommend that have sex with people around your same age. Um, 
especially in like high school and college. You know, once you're in your thirties, age becomes a little bit different. Uh, but definitely when you're younger, you know, have sex with people around your same age. Another thing to remember is intoxication. If someone's drunk or high or on drugs, they can't consent to sex. Um, even marijuana. People often are like, oh, yo, sir, I'm not different when I'm high. Um, I can consent to sex when I'm smoking weed. But really, you can't. Because someone smokes weed to change the way they feel. Um, and that change in the way you feel affects your ability to consent. So, you know, if you want to have sex, don't get high before you have sex. Don't get drunk before you have sex. Um, the best kind of sex you're going to have is, you know, like sober sex between each other. Uh, it's just much, you know, communicate better. You know what you want. It's just going to be more fun and exciting. I don't care what Beyonce says. Uh, drunken love is not all that great. You can't get the motion in the ocean. Uh, so just don't do it. Wait until you're sober. Again, there's plenty of time to have sex when you're sober. And if you feel like you have to, you know, take drugs or get drunk before having sex, uh, you might want to think about whether or not um, you're using these substances in an unhealthy way uh, and whether or not you might want to seek some sort of, like, counseling for uh, that kind of thing. Also, power and authority. Uh, so there's people in our lives who have power and authority over us. Teachers have power over us. Um, police officers have power over us. Um, doctors, a lot of times, have power over us. And so these people sometimes... Uh, might use their power and authority over someone to manipulate them into having sex and rape them or sexually assault them. And so we have to be very cognizant, one, that no one's doing this to us, um, and if it does happen to us, we're reporting it. And two, we're not doing it to someone else. If I'm a boss, if I'm someone's boss, um, I'm not trying to use that power to have sex with someone. Um, and like I know it's happened, bosses have had sex with their employees, and it's been completely consensual. They're both super in love. Maybe they get married later on. Uh, but I think, especially nowadays, like bosses just should not have sex with their employees um, because of this kind of power imbalance that occurs. So definitely think about these kind of things when we're thinking about sex. Um, and if any of these kind of things come up, even if someone's saying yes, even if someone's like wasted and like, yes, I want to have sex, just be like, no, we're not going to have sex now. I'll wait till you're sober. So another really important thing about consent is to think about how to say no. Um, it's not just important that we, you know, look for the enthusiastic yes and things like that, but also if we don't want to have sex, we have to make sure we're saying no effectively, uh, to get our point across. So how do we say no effectively? Use and repeat the word no often. Send strong verbal, um, or strong nonverbal no body language. So if you're saying no, like don't send positive body language, don't send that like excited body language, enthusiastic body language. Send like a, you know, cross your arms, have a serious face, project a strong business type voice, uh, look the person in the eyes and be like real direct, no, I don't want to have sex. Um, one thing that happens is that, again, because these emotions that are all interwined with sex a lot of times, uh, we don't want to say no. Even though we don't want to do it, we don't want to say no, we don't want to hurt the person's feelings. Like I've been there. I've dated people who like, you know, I wasn't ready to have sex yet and I didn't know how to say no because I was worried about hurting their feelings. Um, and it puts us, as the person saying no, in this like awkward situation. So it's really, really important we do say no uh, really directly um, or say yes really directly. Uh, people are often worried like, oh, if I say no too harshly, like I'm gonna be a bitch. Or if I say yes too, uh, like, too aggressively, right? They're gonna be like, oh, she's a slut or they're a slut. Um, don't worry about that, right? Like if you wanna have sex, be excited about it. Say, yes, I want to have sex. Don't be coy. Don't be like, oh, no, maybe. Like, be real upfront. Like, yes, I would love to do that. That sounds awesome. Um, and again, if you don't, no, I don't want to do this. Um, and explain why. Uh, you know, you can tell them, like, you know, I don't want to have sex yet because of this. I don't want to have sex without a condom. Um, I don't want to have sex yet if you're, like, heterosexual. I don't want to have sex if I'm not on birth control. Um... You can explain to them why you don't want to have sex, uh, but make sure you like you know you tell them no, I don't want to have sex. Here's why, uh, so that they know. And then, unfortunately, consent not always. Um, people don't always listen to no means no, and so crisis services. If you've ever been sexually assaulted or raped or anything like that, crisis services is an amazing organization in Buffalo uh, that can really help you out. They have a twenty four hour crisis hotline. Uh, it's right here on the screen. They uh, they do amazing work. If you, if you 
um, want to press charges, they'll help you press charges. They'll like walk you through the whole process. But if you don't want to press charges, if you just need someone to talk to because like you're going through it, they're there just to talk. They're there 24 hours a day just to listen to you, um, just to like help you out through anything you're going through. Not just for sexual assault either. If you're like in any sort of crisis, if you're being physically abused at home by your parents or by a sibling, sexually abused verbally, any of those kind of things. If you're homeless or whatever, like you lost your house because of something, crisis services can help you. They're an amazing, amazing organization. Um, I really, really highly recommend them. I know some of the people over there. They're great. Um, I have coworkers who volunteer for the 24-hour hotline. So please, if you need them, reach out to them. They are a really great organization. I remember, guys, sex is about connection. It's about connection between you and whoever you're having sex with. Um, and so the better the connection, the more you communicate, the more you talk to, talk to each other, um, both verbally communication, nonverbal communication, um, saying yes, saying no, telling each other what you want, it leads to more pleasurable sex um, and more consensual sex. So please, be upfront. Talk to your partner. Tell them what you want. Um, and listen to your partner when they tell you what they want. So you guys can make sure you're having super, super consensual sex. Thank you, everybody. Awesome. Uh, another Wednesday down in the books. I hope you guys are all surviving this COVID thing. Um, hopefully soon I will be back in front of a classroom teaching because I really miss talking to people. Um, yeah. I'm going to oh, I'm gonna leave some uh, extra resources in the comments. Um, there's another video series on YouTube by Planned Parenthood that... Uh, uh, it shows you really, really great examples of yes, no, and maybe, um, and talks about kind of the same stuff we were talking about today. Uh, but you know, there's videos of like people like actually interacting and like you know actually like initiating sexual contact. So definitely, definitely check those out. Um, they really, really can help you see in real life um, what consent looks like. And my favorite thing about them is uh, you have a mix of sexuality. So they have a lesbian couple, gay couple, and a heterosexual couple. Um, they also have, like, people of different ethnicities, so it's not just, like, all, like, whitewashed and stuff. Highly, highly recommend them. Planned Parenthood. I'll link it in the, uh, in the comments. Check them out. Uh, besides that, you know, have a good day. Get consensual sex. It's the best kind of sex. I'll talk to you all later.